Today we are discussing a very complex topic. The terrorist attack in Moscow shocked the whole world. But whoever stands behind this, this act of terror is another proof that if someone cannot win on the battlefield, they resort to terrorism. Wars have rules. The regulatory framework is set in the international laws. However, the idea of regulating warfare is a novel. The earliest attempts can be traced back to the ancient texts such as Mahabharata and Torah. Mahabharata, chariot warriors must attack the chariots. No charioteer shall attack the unfortunate foot warrior, nor frighten him, nor refit him. The Torah requires that the Israelites make a peace offering to the opposing side. When you approach a city to wage war against it, you shall offer it terms of peace. If it doesn't make peace with you, but wages war against you, then you shall besiege it. The Quran says, in battle, Muslims are allowed to strike back in self-defense against those who strike against them. But as soon as the enemies stop attacking, Muslims should stop attacking. In the early days of Christianity, namely in 697, Edomnan of Yona gave it kings and prize and adopted the law of innocence, which banned the killing of women and children in war and the destruction of churches. The deliberate targeting of civilians and civil infrastructure constitutes terrorism. It is an international level concern to witness the head of the SBU Maluk publicly declaring that Ukraine organizes terrorist attacks on Russian territory mere days after such attack. An unknown truck driver was secretly used to blow up the Crimean bridge. He also had loved ones, he had a family, civilians were killed. The explosion occurred on a busy highway, that people were going on vacation to Crimea. Разробкою даного оперативного задуму і реалізацією ми зайнялися ще в березні 22-го року. Ну і успішно ми його реалізували 8 жовтня того ж року. Працювали ми саморобними вибуховими пристроями, які були закамуфльовані під рулони з плівкою. Maluk publicly admits to orchestrating a terrorist attack, shamelessly sharing gruesome details of killing civilians. And it comes up the terrorist attack in Krokos when the whole world is trying to exonerate Ukraine. By the way, Zelensky previously asserted Ukraine's non-involvement, so he either lied or didn't know about SBU scheming. Once again, we are talking about the deliberate killing of civilians. It's as if Russia loaded a tourist bus with explosives to detonate it next to Verkhovna Rada on Sunday afternoon, when the park there is bustling with people. Any death is a tragedy. But what the world would think of you if you deliberately kill civilians to achieve your goals? Highly likely that it is Ukraine for one reason. Within an hour, hour and a half of this incident happening, the U.S. State Department came out and issued the following. They said, this was not Ukraine. How in the hell do they know that? However, we've decided to recall one of the largest terrorist attacks in human history, the Nord Stream explosion. Remarkably, it bears striking similarities to the Crocus attack, as both were preceded by the public warnings issued by the U.S. On the 8th of March, the U.S. Embassy in Moscow advised its citizens to refrain from visiting public places due to the threat of terrorist attacks. On the 22nd of March, the Crocus was attacked. As for the streams, the situation is even more interesting. Here are some statements made by top U.S. officials prior to the blast. I want to be clear with you today. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. Bizarre, isn't it? Despite it being a European project, the U.S. State Department openly said it's future. If Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. NS1 and NS2 are property of international company Nord Stream AG, with shareholders from Germany, France, the Netherlands and Russia. The project practically connected Eurasia into one economic cluster. Russia was selling its resources, Europe received cheap fuel for its industry. It was a strategic object for the energy security of not only Germany, but the entire European Union. Our prosperity has been based on cheap energy coming from Russia, Russian gas, cheap, and suppose 
Germany is estimated to have already incurred almost $300 billion in losses due to the incident. There was much speculation regarding who did it, photo investigations were conducted, and here we attempted to compile all the facts. We would like to draw your attention to the fact that what happened to the Nord Stream is now being revealed from another angle. To identify potential beneficiaries, let us use an age-old question, who it brought us? Letting for who benefits. When something happens, you need to find out who benefits from it, who benefits from crippling all European industries and draining Russia's profits. The first version is China. While China may have had motives to cripple European industries, we found no conclusive evidence of their involvement, and nobody attempted to place blame on China. The second one, Russia. The pipeline greatly contributed to the Russian budget a project built and promoted by Russia. So, accusing Russia requires exceptional cunning or outstanding foolishness. And here we come to two more noteworthy versions. The USA. The states opposed the project since the very beginning, as it undermined their fundamental economic and political interests. The primordial interest of the United States, over which for a century we have fought wars, the First Second Cold War, has been the relationship between Germany and Russia, because united they are the only force that could threaten us, and to make sure that that doesn't happen. It is well known fact that the US threatened to punish Russia by disabling the Nord Stream infrastructure. The events that took place before the explosion are meticulously outlined in an article by the renowned journalist Dima Hirsch. Let's recall its main points. December 2021, National Security Advisor Jack Sullivan convoked a secret meeting at the White House to plan an operation to neutralize Nord Stream 2. At the beginning of 2022, a proposal on how to sabotage the pipeline was shared with Sullivan by the CIA Working Group. March 2022, its members traveled to Norway, a NATO member country, for a meeting with their Norwegian counterparts. June 2022, the NATO exercises Baltic Operations 22 commands. At this time, American Navy submarine divers installed explosives on the gas transport lines NS-1 and NS-2. The explosives were supposed to detonate from a hydroacoustic signal. On the 26th of September, a boil was dropped from a Norwegian Navy reconnaissance aircraft Boeing P-8 Poseidon. The boil transmitted the hydroacoustic signal to the explosives planted during the exercise. Furthermore, a few days prior, an S-explosion, the NATO exercises Northern Coast 2022 took place in this exact location. It was the first time the island of Bornholm and its surroundings were chosen for the exercises. Nine ships were involved in the exercises, including a frigate, a reconnaissance ship, a minesweeper, a German Navy submarine and a French Navy minesweeper. In addition, a unit of divers from the U.S. Navy took part in the drills, operating from a headquarters ship of the Latvian Navy. Also of interest are the non-standard and the logical movements of some civilian and commercial vessels, a U.K. tanker, a bulk carrier from Panama, and a Polish fishing trawler. Between the 22nd and 24th of September, these ships deviated from their routes and carried out unusual navigation near the location of the upcoming incident. I consulted maritime experts and found out that the path of each ship is closely monitored. Any delay or deviation entails substantial costs for the ship owner. Each voyage follows the optimal path with a divergence threshold of 5%. So any unusual deviation is an outstanding occurrence. Denmark's Energy Agency says one of the two ruptured pipelines in the Baltic Sea appears to have stopped leaking natural gas. And that's what they said to explain this later. It's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy and thus to take away from Vladimir Putin the weaponization of energy as a means of advancing uh, his uh, imperial designs.
And I think the administration is very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. Zima Hirsch emphasized in his report that at every stage of the operation to destroy the Nord Stream, Biden's administration prioritized secrecy and was focused on deflecting suspicion away from the US and its NATO allies. As a reliable source noted, if the attack can later be traced to the US, it will be considered an act of war. There is a motive, there are funds, there is also a partner. Moreover, following the explosion, it was the US and Norway that began to supply Europe with energy. With access to cheap gas severed, Europe was left with no other option but to turn to more expensive alternatives. The next version is Ukraine. Some media, mainly from the US, have pointed fingers at Ukraine. There is evidence that Colonel Roman Chervinsky, ex-head of the fifth office of the SBU counterintelligence department, ex-deputy head of the main intelligence office of the Ukrainian defense ministry, who served in the SBU spec ops of the Soviet operation. No wonder a person possibly involved in such high-profile operations is behind bars today, facing charges of exceeding his official authority. In June 2022, in his comments to Financial Times, Kirill Budanov said, attacks and diversions have been and will be carried out in Russia and beyond. The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal and other media mentioned a mysterious Andromeda yacht that took part in the operation. We did some research, and here's what we found out. For this operation, a group of divers was involved, among them Sergei Kuznetsov, the team leader, Andrei Burgamistrenko, proficient in English, the supper training and diving experience. Oleg Varava, Ruslan Rudenko, co-signed Kapilan, deputy mayor of the city of Bela Tserko, a female technical driver, co-signed Marisha. Roman Chervinsky, head of the team, supervised by Kirill Budanov. According to our info, the US specialists were involved as well, providing organizational and technical support and oversight including diving equipment, fake Romanian IDs and explorers. All under the direction of the Deputy Chief of Mission at U.S. Embassy in Kiev, Smith, with the involvement of a former head of the main intelligence office of Ukrainian Defense Ministry, Vasily Borba. The group was trained in a quarry in the Zhitomir region. It was then transported to Romania, where the divers resided using Romanian IDs in a private house near the Romanian naval base in Mangale. There, they continued their training under close to real conditions of the South Stream Sea section. After training, the group moved to Poland, where they rented another smaller yacht, Andromeda. It was Alek Varava, a technical diver with a callsign Marisha, and Ruslan Rudenka, who dove to set the charges. At first glance, this seems strange. Two different versions with evidence to back up both. But a special service expert explained to me in rare cases of utmost importance when absolute secrecy is needed, cover-up operations are employed. These operations mirror each step of the actual operation, and then this version is made the main one. The version about the Ukrainian trace and the explosion of the Nord Stream is actively being dispelled by the Western media. Don't you find any parallels? It was a, a deliberate act of sabotage, and now the Russians are pumping out disinformation and lies. We work with our allies to get to the bottom exactly what, it, precisely what happened. Ultimately, the terrorist attack on the Nord Stream was not an attack on Russia. Russia appears to have restored its oil and gas revenues. The real target was Germany in order to reduce its competitiveness in world markets and also to influence the German position in the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. Moreover, Russia voices interesting information. State Duma deputies Nikolai Haritonov, Andrei Krasov, Yana Lantratova, as well as Alexander Dugin and Andrei Derkach made an open statement that the financing of such attacks, including the assassination of Daria Dugina, the assassination attempt on Zahar Prilepin, were financed by Nikolai Zlachevsky, the owner of the Ukrainian gas production company Burisma, the company company that employed Hunter Biden, son of the President of the US. Dear friends, you can draw your own conclusions. I'd like to remind you that all the links to my official channels are in the description box down below. These are the Panchinka Telegram channel with over 270,000 subscribers, private channel Panchinka Plus, access via the link is also in the description. Subscribe if you wish to keep in touch with me and have access to important inside information. We have also created the US election channel. Take care. Bye.